Hi folks, I'm Gary with Big Ben Saddlery. This month, uh, for our tech tip, I thought we'd talk about oiling a new saddle. We've been getting a few phone calls this last month about people who have bought a new saddle and uh, they want to know what they need to do to oil it the first time or condition it so that it's ready to ride. Most saddles, if they're made by a reputable saddle maker or saddle shop, are already oiled. They're oiled several times before they're put together. Um, but some saddle makers don't oil them as much as maybe the customer would like. And then a lot of the ready-mades or factory-made saddles, they don't spend much time at all uh, oiling it at all, if any. Some of them have never seen a oil bucket. But uh, the first time something's oil, first few times you, you want to use oil uh, instead of a conditioner or something like that. That oil just penetrates that virgin leather so well and gets goes all the way through it. And it's real hard for creams or paste to do that in the beginning. So uh, what we use here at Big Bend is 100% uh, pure neat's foot oil. And you want to be careful when you're buying neat's foot oil that it doesn't have the word compound anywhere in the label, fine print, whatever. If it's a compound, neat's foot oil compound, it's probably just filtered, re-refined motor oil of some sort with a tiny amount of neat's foot oil in it. So you want to make sure that it's 100% pure to get the good stuff. The compounded oil is where neat's foot oil gets its bad name because it will collect dust and dirt and all sorts of stuff and turn your saddle a lot darker than you want it to be. So. Uh, Anyhow, the other, the other thing you can use if you don't have access to the meat foot oil is olive oil. And just about any olive oil is good. Um, and it's light, a light oil and it penetrates real well, goes in fast. Only thing, if you use olive oil on your saddle, uh, be sure that you're keeping it someplace where the mice can't get to it. That olive oil is, of course, edible and the, the mice realize that. And, it just entices them to stand on your saddle and kind of pick at the leather around the edges. So uh, we'll go ahead and, and uh, go through the motions of oiling one. I'm not going to really oil it because it doesn't need it, but we'll look at it and, uh, and kind of see where to put the oil and how to get the best results whenever you do oil a saddle. I've turned this saddle upside down. And what we're going to do, the, the items on the saddle that um, need to be oiled the most where all your torque and tension and things are, are the riggings and the stirrup leathers and the latigos. So right here, you want to pull your skirt and your rigging. This happens to be a flat plate rigging. And hold it where you can get a wool skin or a sponge with some oil on it. And then just drip that oil in there and let the oil go and run between the rigging and the bars if it's at all possible. Let it run up there a little bit, pool up, puddle up, and it'll penetrate a lot better. And then, of course, do the entire back of your rigging and the edges. And then move to the back, do the rear riggings the same way. Let that oil run down in there. Try not to get it on the rear housing or the seat or any of this stuff. We just want it on the riggings. And, uh, if it's at all possible, we'll keep it on the riggings and, and let it run down in there, and then we'll have the backside oiled. Now we're going to turn the saddle over and, and go from there. As you can see here, I've pulled this stirrup leather out a little bit so that we can get to the top part of the fender here, into the this part of the stirrup leather. So we want to get this stirrup leather here as, as good as we can and the top of the fender, but only the top of the fender. Anything that's going to show that you see, the fender, the seat, the skirts, the rear housing, all of that, we want to oil just from the top in the beginning. Just from the top, and that gives that oil a chance to disperse and, and even out so that it looks nice and not be blotchy and dark over here and light over here. So we're going to oil the front of the fender, and then you can do both sides of the stirrup leather. It doesn't matter because you don't see it. But you get this right here, from here, in the back, the other side of the stirrup leather, but not the back of the fender. 
and then you pull the stirrup leather back through there and go a little bit farther until the farthest point on here that you've oiled is showing down here. And that way you know you're getting all of it. And then you can oil this. After you've gotten the stirrup leather and the outside of the fender, just start on the outside of everything. You're going to do the rigging, the skirts. Be sure and lift your skirts up so you can get up underneath there. Your uh, Latigo carrier, everything. Let a little bit run down in the cracks if you can. Do your swales and let it run down in there to make sure you've got it all covered. Do your seat, your rear housing, and then when you get to the skirts back here, you're going to raise up your rigging again, raise the rear housing. Get all up underneath there. Try and keep it off the back of the rear housing here. And just get the top of the skirts. And uh, so you've got all of that. Back cannel, all of this, your horn. And then just let it set. If you can, put it out on the fence on a warm day and let it warm up. And that'll cause that oil to penetrate a lot faster. And it'll even out a lot quicker. But once it's all evened out and it's all the same color, um, like you may say, well, my swells are darker than my seat. Well, you might want to even it up a little bit, put a little more oil on the swells or, or wherever you need it. But whenever you get it like you want it, then it's okay to go back and oil the backside and get, get the backside. So it's just probably a single coat of everything. And uh, backs of your blank billets up and underneath your rear housing as much as you can and uh, this rough out oils up really really nice it's real forgiving the slick out and the carved and all that's a little harder to work with but uh, once you've got the oil in there and got it oiled like you want then you might want to go ahead and put a another conditioner on it of some sort that has a little wax in it the wax is kind of what keeps the moisture out and the dryness out. It, it acts as a barrier between the moisture coming and going all the time. And the moisture coming and going is what dry rots the leather. So once we get the oil in it, then we always suggest that you put something like the Big Ben Conditioner, R.M. Williams, Skidmore's, Rayhole Saddle Butter, anything like that and put that on especially on the rough out it works really really good and don't forget that whenever you put the oil and all this other stuff on there it's going to change the color a little bit that's why the production saddles they don't put it on there their saddles look really nice because they haven't been oiled but it's not safe to to go on with them like that you need they need to be oiled just for the longevity of the saddle and the safety of the rider and uh, another question we've had a lot is about Latigo tie straps. Can you oil them? And uh, my answer is yes. Uh, some people think that you're not supposed to oil Latigo. Latigos come from the tannery with oil inside of them, or they're supposed to. And I've been oiling Latigos for 50 years. And uh, if you get one oiled and you put too much oil on it, well, it can get kind of nasty and collect dirt and stuff. But as long as you don't put too much on it and you keep it oiled or conditioned with any kind of conditioner that penetrates, it's going to make your Latigo last a lot longer and wear better. But uh, anyway, if you have any questions about this or something else, just feel free to give us a call. Thanks for watching.